How's it going, folks? I'm Matt. This is Photosyntec. Welcome to another episode. Now, before we get into the garden update, I'm actually going to go through and show you the short video that I shot a couple days ago that I didn't actually get the chance to post as a solo video, so I'm just going to post it up because I wanted to talk a little bit about it. So let's do that right now. May ask, why am I sitting here besides three five gallon buckets? Today, we're gonna bust bud washing. Pigeons, buddy, this one's for you. Let's get into it. Okay, so my last garden update, I, I talked about how I did some bud washing and whatnot, and I've got the actual bud washing water sitting here, okay? There's the original bucket that we had all the solution in, the, the baking soda, lemon juice, and I've got other videos on this stuff, guys, if you wanna know all about the procedure. And then I've got the two rinse buckets. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and filter these through a 220 micron and a 25 micron set of uh, washing bags, and we'll show you how many trichomes I actually, well, pulled out, lost, and how much crap I didn't bring over with me. And then I'm gonna take you up to the grow room because I wanna show you the other benefit of bud washing. So let me get things set up on the counter here. All right, set up on the counter. I hope the lighting's okay. It should be kind of golden hour right now. So, being a little noisier, I got the bubble bags, I got the 220, and I got the 25 micron on my dishwashers on right here, so you might hear that too. Now again, guys, my my rinsing bag, eh, see, there's the dishwasher. <laughs> my rinsing bag, ha uh, my rinsing bucket, has a spigot on it. So as I rinse through, all the water's gonna drain out. And we'll show you guys in fairly short order. So I'm just gonna basically time lapse this while I speed it up and I'll come through, dump a bunch of buckets, and then we'll show you what came out. Let's, let's do it. So time lapse is stopped. Wasn't that awesome? Ooh. Guys, this is gross. <laughs> the water's still draining out the bottom there, but it's uh, it's all done. So let's take a look at what we got here. Ding ding ding. Well, I'm just gonna pause the video so I can flip things around here on my mic. All right, I think that's better. It's just that I'm not talking into the bag. Okay, guys, look at this is this is this was only what uh, three plants that I washed. So. That's the amount of gunk. Now, granted, a little bit of straw fell in. Not the dirt. The dirt, actually, I think this was on buds or something, guys. Uh, maybe on some lower sites there from, uh, you know, just watering. Uh, same with the leaves. But overall, guys, there's there's grossness in here. Like, there really is. Like, aside from the, the little matting stuff. But this, this is like a bunch of cat fur, matted fur. And it's going to wash my hands off. But this is expected, okay? This is what we expected. We expected to see. If I can get this off here. So I'm doing this one-handed, so. Bang it all around, bang it all around, dance all around. Okay, and this is the money shot. Guys, This I'm not editing this out, I'm not doing any changes. Definitely looks like there's some stuff in the bottom though. But how much stuff is there? And more importantly, of what quality is it? All right, okay. Okay, so. Let's zoom this in here. Let's see if you guys can see. Um, well, let me grab a spoon here because somebody did dishes beside me. Okay. So, and this, these heads look nasty too. I'm not going to lie. I think there's still some dirt in here. Okay. So, three plants the uh, two critical mass and the one white widow. And. They were washed, swirled through each bucket 30 seconds at a time, gently. And as you can see, this is the amount of trichomes and dirt and gunk that made it through the 200 micron, guys. So like I said, this this is all this stuff. This is everything through a 200, sorry, 220 micron. So I would have normally used at least a 150, probably a 120 between to get rid of all these dirty heads. So the amount of lost, well, hash, I, I'm gonna say is minimal. And maybe I'll repeat this down the road, but really there's there's like barely anything left in that bag, guys. So does bud washing hurt trichomes? Not really, not really at all, guys. There's their jack squat in there. But now I'm gonna go out to the grow room because I wanna show you guys the major benefit to this. And I think this is gonna be maybe the selling point or eh, whatever, you won't care and you won't ever do it. And that's not really gonna be my problem either. So let's head out to the grow room. 
Okay, so we're out here in the grow room. Now guys, it is Thursday. I washed and hung these plants on Sunday, okay? I'm gonna open up the grow tent here where I've got everything drying. And guys, I've dried for 14 days in this environment, okay? 14 days before, okay? This is basically the end of day four. And this is what I want you to look at. Okay, first off, my drying environment. Okay, it's just starting to peak up there. This has been sitting at around 18 to 20 degrees, so it's, mm, 65 to 70-ish, right, Fahrenheit. Maybe a touch warm, but we'll get to that in a minute. My humidity's been, you know, 60, 65, and I've got data logging on this. I, if I can figure out how to export it, I'll even post it on the screen just so I can show you guys that this environment has been choice. Now look at these critical mass, okay? Look at these leaves. This is four days, guys, four days. And you're like, Matt, you've overdried your stuff. And I'm like, no, guys, I haven't. These buds are perfect. They are nice. They're just a little bit, uh, uh, you know, feeling some resistance. They feel perfect. Uh, I don't do the branch, pardon me, guys. I don't do the branch snap, but I mean, well, this just snapped, okay? Four days, guys. Now, the test. Oh. Guys, it smells like really good weed, okay? No hay smell, none. These are getting bucked up, and I'm going to go put them in the jars tonight. Four days! Four days of drying. Now, now, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa Matt, you, you screwed it up. No, guys, I haven't. I want you to take a look at this. These, this is the, I think, yeah, this is the Sunset Sherbet right here in the back. These have been hanging here, same spot. These didn't get bud washed. Look at, look how bendy this branch is still. Guys, look at this leaf, okay? Look at, it's got a little bit of crumbly on it, but for the most part, that's still a limp leaf. These are completely disintegrating. Bud washing not only cleans your buds, but it also speeds up the drying process immensely. Guys, I thought it did before because I'd never actually done a comparison like this. And granted, these are different plants, but it, this bud structure is a lot thicker, a lot denser than this. And these still have a lot to go in the dry. And same with, uh, well here, if I can spin this around. I don't wanna, yeah, this is kinda hung up. But I, I mean, maybe I can come down here and you guys can see. I've got the, uh, uh, which one is this? This is one of the, the Skittles. This is the other Skittles. And, and it's still, like it's got at least a good couple of days to go, at least. Right? But these, oh, my hands are getting all sticky. I shouldn't be squishing the bud so much. I really shouldn't. I gotta handle these better. But uh, yeah, these are these are done. Same with this white widow. She's done. Like guys, four day dry. Uh, so there you go. Very, very pleased with this. Anyway. And yeah, bud washing, super drying. I uh, Now, when I shot that, that was on day four. I actually put the buds back in and let them go another night. And that ended up being perfect. And hold on a second. I got the exhaust kicking on. Let's turn that off. And that actually ended up being perfect. Like five day dry. The White Widow right now is sitting in a jar. She's curing. She's beautiful. 62% humidity. Same with the critical mass. Just doing fantastic. I even took some of that critical mass, squished it, uh, seven grams, got a 20% yield out of it. Really, really nice sort of gassy, fruity terpenes. Loved it. Now, guys, uh, what's going on in the garden other than bud washing being completely busted? We're never talking about it again, and that's it. Well, I've been still struggling with the blue mats, but this is more, I think, the initial design that I did. I've been on sustainablevillage.com and I've been looking at some of the designs that they have on there. And what I've come to determine is I think that, well, things are probably sufficient. I'm, I'm really at the minimum. And I think that's been part of my problem is the bed's just been struggling to, to keep up and I'm getting in a bit more wet, a bit more dry. So that being said, I'm doing a completely different design. So I'm gonna swap the camera around here so I can show you guys more. And we'll also get into the other thing that I wanted to talk about. So let's uh, bring her out here. Actually, I'm maybe brighten this up a little bit. Wobble, wobble, wobble. There we go, not so dark. Okay, so containers. I wanted to talk about container size and why picking container size uh, through the different stages is very important. Um, also because I've got a kind of a variety of different container sizes in here and the new three by three, which we'll get into in just a minute. So. You'll see these plants. These are the four critical masses. Uh, I'm going to take a cut off of one of these and that'll become the mother. I was going to mother one of them, but I wanted to actually stick four in the three by three. And I'll talk about why in just a minute. 
But you can see these plants aren't looking as healthy as they could be. I got a little bit of yellowing leaf here, uh, you know, down here. Things things aren't going as good. You know, look at this. We got this this one leaf here that's really yellow. Why? Well, guys, it's pretty simple. They're hungry. These containers are too small for what I was doing. And well, I probably should have transplanted. I should have done that about three weeks ago. And that would have given these plants a chance to expand their root zones out a little bit and get a little bit bigger because these these little, I guess, pint, I think these are pint size <laughs> containers are, are just, they're not sufficient. Is it a concern? No, not in the slightest. Once I get these put into the three by three, they're gonna explode and these will be just awesome plants, okay? But I did have something else, a little bit of a mistake happen and I wanted to highlight that and that's here on this white widow. You can see, oh, what's going on? Um, especially here on this leaf. <sighs> I had a problem with one of my wireless plugs. I've got a wireless plug in the uh, two by four and the thing lost its mind. It, it stopped connecting properly and it was leaving the lights on for 24 hours. Now, last week I was talking about magnesium deficiency and I've been treating that in these mix. I was, that's what I was doing as a spraying. I did a foliar spray with some Epsom salts and rather than making things good because the lights were on, I did this right before the lights were supposed to go off. I sprayed and then I went up to bed kind of thing. Uh, I ended up burning the plants a little bit. I'm not really concerned. It's it's not the end of the world. But at the same time, this, this white widow, uh, she does definitely look like she's got a little bit of that hemp mosaic virus, but I, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I've had it come up in a plant before, and while it's a virus, it does not seem to move. I haven't seen this pop up in any of the other plants, and you know, this has been running in here for a while now, this white widow. But what am I gonna do with them? So, let's talk about that. Well, you know, the original plan, guys, was I was going to do the two by four space here and, and run some critical mass here and some white widow, but what I've decided to do and we'll talk about the JMO here in just a minute, is in the three by three here, which I've just finished setting up, I've got space for four plants and I'm gonna run this entire thing as critical mass because I really like the strain. It's It seems to be quite a nice strain, good terpenes, good yield, good profile, grows well, all that stuff. So we're gonna go four critical mass in here, that'll be the run in this space for the next little bit. And what I'm gonna do, because these plants are a little bit hungry, is I'm gonna get them put into this bed, I'm gonna train them out probably for about three or four days till they start eating again and whatnot and then I'm gonna flip the lights and these guys will go into flower. So what about the White Widow? Well, let's talk about that. I'm gonna run it as an orphan. This plant does not get very tall at all. It doesn't spread out very much. I'm gonna flip it into a, probably another one of these square pots, but maybe something a bit smaller. I've got I've, I got a whole ton of pots. I'm not really concerned about that, but I, I just, I'm gonna run this as sort of an orphan here in the grow room off to the side. It can get whatever light it gets. It'll grow however it grows. So I'll probably have to move it around and kind of fight with it a little bit. But because what I'm gonna do here is when this girl's done, a large marge, and she is coming along really nicely. Let's just talk about her for a second. Uh, large marge, when she's all finished up here, we are gonna put in another two by four bed. And then I'm gonna be running large marge again because I've got a couple of cuts of her and she'll be, she'll be going again in this space, but just in the two by four in that grassroots living pot. Uh, sorry, grassroots fabric pot, living soil bed. So really excited about that. And since we're on the topic of large marge, uh, once more, I'm gonna give a huge shout out to my boy, Riot Powder, dude. Oh, Riot and I met up this week. I gave him a cut of the large marge and he in turn hooked me up with some laughing Buddha that he grew. I pressed that stuff on the weekend for a 28% yield of absolutely golden looking rosin. Guys, go check out my Instagram if you wanna see that if you haven't already. But what a beautiful, beautiful plant. So uh, Riot, dude, brother, thank you so much for sharing that with me. He gave me some seeds too, some uh, sour diesel Laughing Buddha crosses that he's put together. So I think I'm gonna run those because man, that Laughing Buddha, she's, she's what I want. She's a high producer. So hopefully that'll carry through in the crosses that she gave me. Now, speaking of high, look at this Freaking girl in the middle. Uh, Large Marge was taking the crown here, guys, but I think she's been dethroned, and I don't know what we're gonna call this uh, this middle girl yet, because I do want to give her a name. Uh, the contest is on for, again, the gummy mummy. That's what this is all about, why I'm growing this JMO. So let me see if we can uh, get you guys a good shot here. It's a little bright, so it's hard for me to see in the monitor, but I don't know if you guys can see. 
This girl is pushing trichomes out onto the fan leaves, like this far too, like even this fan leaf. If you can, again, see there, I can't tell through the thing. Yeah, I'm sorry if it's fuzzy, but yeah, she is pushing trichomes everywhere. And this is sort of the thing about these in-house genetics and why I've been so keen to grow some of them is that they're trichome monsters. They just push the frost. And that's been the whole thing here is to try and get a super frosty GMO cross Going back to, again, what I was told by Levi Lansrath when I interviewed him, the owner of Low Templates, the guys that gave me that rosin press, it's stellar crew, he said GMOs are one of the best, you know, for pressing and whatnot, and that's kind of the idea. So that's what we're running with. And guys, that's kind of the update this week. I, I was going to show you everything with the 3x3 done, but I wanted to show you, really, some sad-looking plants, a little underfed, not looking so great... And then when we come back next week and see these in the three by three, how banging they're going to be. So that's it. That's the update for this week. Uh, guys, that bud washing thing, again, start looking at it. I mean, the, the cleaning of the buds was a nice thing, but this has not been the only time I've seen a really quick dry. And the buds don't smell like hay at all. Like they smell beautiful. Super, 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 super impressed. So that being said, I am Matt. This is Photosyntech. Guys, last thing. Meet the grower this Sunday, Rob from CLTV. Oh man, we had a wicked chat. Can't wait for you guys to see that. Otherwise, I am Matt, this is Photosyntech. Thank you so much for stopping by. We out.